In this video, I'll use polar integrals to find the area inside a curve. Find the area inside the smaller loop of the Limousin r equals 1 plus 2 cosine theta. This is the inner loop, so this is the area that we are looking for. And a little background on how we can find that. Well, if we have some curve, some general curve that goes, let's say it goes like this, just the first part of it, and we want to find this area from theta equals a to theta equals b. That's that's finding this area here. Then that area is going to equal the integral from theta equals a to theta equals b of one half times r squared, where r is the the polar function like we have here, r squared d theta. So one half r squared d theta. Doesn't look like much. Doesn't look pretty easy. Well, let's tackle this. So in blue, we want to find this area. So we have the integral from a to b. And you're saying, hey, shouldn't we be plugging some numbers in? What are a and b here? Well, I'll get to that after, after we, we uh, get through the problem a little bit. But, but yes, it's not going to be 0 because 0 starts out here, and then you've got some theta going in this direction. And so we know it's going to be over 90 degrees, or over pi over 2 radians. Um, and it's not going to be uh, pi radians yet. So that's going to be the first time you hit it, and then it'll sweep through again. And, and so we'll find those. Okay, a to b. Now, 1 half times the 1 plus 2 cosine theta quantity squared, because we're using this formula here, d theta. Now let's multiply that out, and you get from a to b of 1 half times 1 plus 4 cosine theta plus 4 cosine squared of theta d theta. I'm going to move the 1 half out now. And I'm also going to use an identity. And that identity is cosine squared of theta equals 1 plus cosine of 2 theta over 2. So yes, I know I just pulled that out of thin air, but I'm going to use it here to substitute in for this cosine squared theta. And what I do is the 2 cancels out with this 4, so I have 2 times 1 plus uh, the quantity, 1 plus cosine 2 theta, so 2 plus 2 cosine 2 theta is what I'm going to end up with when I plug this in. Okay, so we get from A to B, I promised I'd move that 1 half outside. Here it is. 1 plus 4 cosine theta plus 2 times, or plus 2, plus 2 cosine 2 theta, integrating with respect to theta. And now I'm going to combine these like terms, this 1 and this 2, and we get 1 half integral from A to B of 3 plus 4 cosine theta plus 2 cosine 2 theta integrating with respect to theta. All right, we, we are ready to take the antiderivative. Let's do it. The antiderivative then, 1 half times 3 theta 
plus four sine theta plus sine of two theta evaluated from A to B. Okay, I'm going to write the A and B in here. So, because I promised you I would. So, we have this. We want to know when does the radius equal zero. Here the radius equals three. We got one, two, three units. So, in the beginning, when, when theta is zero, the radius equals three. But when does the radius equal zero? Right here. Well, let's Let's do that right here. The radius equals 0, and that is the radius is 1 plus 2 cosine of theta. And so what you're so finding is when does negative 1 half equal cosine of theta? And of course, at this, I could write one more step and write inverse cosine of, of negative 1 half, but we know where we're going with this. We're going to get theta equals. 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. So those are the angles that where we start here and where we finish. So we've got this this 4 pi over 3. I'm sorry, 2 pi over 3 is the first one. 2 pi over 3 and then the other angle is all the way over to here. Really to right there, and that's four pi over three. So that's that's what sweeps out this area. Okay, so I'll write those in there. We've got two pi over three and four pi over three. Okay. So next step, <coughs> let's evaluate this. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to plug these in. So I'm not going to show the step of plugging it in. I'm going to evaluate when we plugged in uh, 4 pi over 3 and then minus evaluate 2 pi over 3. So it is 1 half times 4 pi minus 2 square roots of 3 plus the square root of 3 over 2 minus that 1 half again because that's distributed both times when you evaluate both of these 1 half times 2 pi plus 2 square roots of 3 minus the square root of 3 over 2 and we get all that by plugging in 2 pi over 3 with all of these in all of these theta positions okay at the end let's jump to it you get pi minus 3 halves times the square root of 3 for all of you who love the exact answers or if the book is act asking for the exact answer I like to do something with this so I'm going to approximate to a number that we're more used to seeing and that is 0.544 well we're not used to seeing that number but a decimal we're more used to seeing a decimal than uh, square root of 3 and, and pi so we have a better feel of what that means so that is the area of this blue shaded region